When I was growing up, people didn't tell us to do art, they told us to get a job. This show has given us an opportunity to, uh, to kind of pull in different people that we're interested in, alike, want to expose them to it, or, or have those people get exposure. One thing that I've noticed, and, uh, and one thing that keeps me in Texas as an artist, uh, is that our artists have more fun. Ready to party, ready to drink, <laughs> ready to have music. You know, without a, a really good party, then you couldn't really appreciate good art. You come, you invite everybody, we'll buy the beer, and you show up. At a keg over there, and the art was over here. These shows grew and grew, and by number three, I don't know if we're getting to number three, but that was epic. Three was nuts, and, and I think a lot of it was just because of the layout. And so anywhere you went, there was 50 people standing there, you know, hanging out, you know, or there was 200 people dancing wildly. And people were outside, inside, on the streets. The studio space that he was using at the time was packed. The streets were blocked off. We had an outdoor stage. The stage was probably 10 or 12 feet in the air. And so the band was up there, and all the crowd was down here, and the fact that I could go up there and drink and hang out with the bands and look down at this whole crowd and think, I cannot believe there's this many people here to see this one show in one night. It was a festival. I mean, it is one night only. And I think that's another thing in the past that's made it, that's made it such a, a unique thing. It was, it was a one night only kind of thing. You couldn't come back the next day or the next week to look at the artwork during the day. You had to get there at night. You had bands over here. You had amazing art that had never been to Lubbock. Then you'd go to this larger complex and you'd have you know, just these kind of meandering hallways all filled with art, opening up to rooms filled with art. There was 3,000 people there that night. Uh, I'd never seen anything like it. For a one night show, and that's where Jeff really started pumping it, and his brother Brian, this whole Wheeler Brothers, they really worked it hard on the media. It was epic. When Jeff started out, uh, he would advertise so much, we would end up, I would end up going to the television station with him. We'd go do radio interviews. Uh, uh, we, you know, we just would really, like I said, pump it up, try to get, make sure everybody in the world knew about this one night. Well, from the start, uh, we both, uh, you know, had the idea that, you know, we wanted to show our, uh, our art in a way that, um, that brought in as, as many people, as many different kinds of people as possible. It'll be live music, you know, it's gonna be a celebratory art extravaganza, which I think is still what it's called. And uh, we did it, you know, and we started, we started uh, pumping it up about, you know, six weeks before it happened, talking about it. Most of it was planned at, uh, at Hub City Brewery. Uh, back in the day, we did the chalkboard murals behind the bar and uh, uh, got free beer, so we were down there quite a bit. Blame it on me. So they were talking about, you know, getting a studio, living in the studio, having shows. You know, he started off by inviting other local artists to show with us, but he also started inviting artists that uh, he knew that he had connections with in the past. Uh, and as it got into its third and fourth and fifth year, you know, we started taking it on the road, uh, started making more connections. I met Jeff at Central Washington University in grad school, and from there, his brother would come and visit. At the time, I was living in San Francisco. I had blue hair, earrings, and I showed up at the Lubbock airport, and this guy in a cowboy hat and boots up to his knees and a goatee is walking towards me in the airport, and I'm like, I'm just gonna keep my head down. I got blue hair and earrings. I'm gonna keep on walking. And he walks right up to me and he says, uh, are you James? I said, yep. And he's like, I'm B.C. Gilbert. I'm here to pick you up. Jeff and Brian are really unique and they're, you know, they're, they're so excitable and they, they have this great energy about them and it's purely Texas. All of the artists that we know from around the state um, and that we've met over the last 15 years of doing this have become really good friends. They're the kind of people that you want to have in your life, you know, and you want to have fun with. We're all equal in this show. The politics is in 
the art itself, an expression of political art, not in the people. We're all in this, um, and that, that's the way the, the Wheeler brothers have done this. It's not about a who's who list, it's about art. You know, I think a lot of these artists that I know, they've been exposed to other places. They have, they're well-traveled, they're well-read, they know art. For me, travels, especially to Peru, being, uh, falling in love with mummies, falling in love with humans that were 2,000 years old. Well, one thing, it's, it's all Texas artists, and they're all so radically different. You know, and that's what's always interesting to me to find people that grew up in this geographical area. And we're all living in the same conditions with the same external stimuli, but yet go out there and look at all the different types of art and it's extraordinary. I think an artist's uh, work is really influenced by their, their earliest memories and, and their upbringing and, and their earliest environment. Growing up Catholic in an, in an Italian um, you know, Italian part of Houston. So that influence of that's a different kind of dark side. It's a very ritualistic, loving dark side. I don't really try to make Western art, but I definitely use a lot of that imagery in my work. Something takes hold and then it just has its own life in terms of the body of work for me. And then once it's run its course, it's done. I put a cap on it or sometimes I'll stop and move on to something else and then revisit it. Some of those things are ongoing and some are just very short-lived. Literally, everywhere I go, I'm working because I'm taking everything in through my eyes, which are a lens. I'm taking it in, I'm processing it, and it's, it's stored there and it comes out in different ways, you know? And you never know what you'll see or what'll trigger some inspiration or an entire direction in your life. Oh my.